So today we're playing, and you're going to have to excuse me because I do have to read the computer screen to even remotely pronounce this one correctly. We're playing Kansaku Dama Nage Kantaru no Tokairu Goju San Sugi. Or the explosive throwing Kantaru and the 53 stations of the Tokairu until we win. Now before we get started, I have to thank Ju Wario and his series, You Can Play This, because without it, I never would have found this game. This game is great, but it's hard as hell. And originally, I was going to review a different game called... <coughs> but this week really went by too fast. I was way too caught up in playing a game I had never played before, and... Well, the other one got put on the back burner. Maybe next week, or maybe I'm just never going to play it. Now this game is difficult. I mean, very fucking hard. There are 21 levels, and you only get two lives. On top of that, there are no continues, no saves, and no passwords. Ouch. Talk about hard. Plus, once you die, you go all the way back to the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> this game is not joking around. Yes, this makes the game very difficult, but it's still a good game. Because the difficulty doesn't come from dying over and over again, but from how you approach and get by enemies. For an early NES game, the amount of thinking you have to do is surprising. So in my Silver Surfer video, I kind of explained how to beat every level and what you need to do. The problem with doing that in this game is that it's 21 levels long, so this video would end up being about 15 hours long, and I barely have the patience to make a 20 minute video. Plus, this game relies on the classical Japanese style of blow everything up until you find all the secrets type of gameplay. It's uh, it's the spiritual predecessor to games like Mystery Quest and Mylon's Secret Castle. So if I go through all the levels and tell you where all the secrets are without you finding it out on your own, well, I'm kind of breaking the game, aren't I? Instead of doing that, I think what we're going to do in this video, really, is just to show you the strategies and ideas used with all of the obstacles you have to overcome. That way you get a good grasp of the game and learn how I beat the game, and then you can learn how to beat it on your own. Plus, I really don't feel like reviewing 21 levels of a game. Alright, let's get started with the enemies. The ninja. The first enemy in the game you're going to meet. They're annoying, but not impossible. They like to jump around a lot, and really, they'll try to jump over you rather than jump into you, so you can pretty easily hit them with bombs. The only problem you're going to run into is that if they're underneath you, they will more often than not jump straight up and kill you, and that can be very annoying. Just a bomb to the face and they're dead. You don't have to worry about them. The samurai, or at least I'm assuming it's a samurai. I have no idea what this thing is. It could be an angry sushi chef for all I know. Anyway, it replaces the ninja in some of the levels, and later on in the game, they sort of cycle back and forth. They're pretty similar, and they have very similar styles. Same speed, same jumping. Uh, but the samurai likes to jump into you rather than over and around you, whereas the ninja will jump over you. Uh, he does have the same annoying habit, though, of jumping straight up when you're right above him, killing you instantly. Just another bomb to the face, and they're done. The helmet, dude. I don't know what this guy's supposed to be exactly, but I do know he's got a big blue helmet on, and if you try to throw bombs at him, he just cuts him in half, so makes your bombs kind of useless. If you try to jump over him, he jumps up and kills you. There are only two ways to kill this guy. One is to kneel down and plant the bomb and have him walk over it, so you kind of have to time the bomb planting with him walking over it. The second is to have the absolute best pixel-perfect throwing accuracy you have ever had in the game. And yeah... I'm that awesome. The guy with a gun. <laughs> this guy is annoying. He wears this blue uh, jacket, I guess. I don't know, I'm not doing Japanese culture much credit right now. Anyway, he walks in on screen pretty abruptly, so if you're in the middle of a jump, you're generally guaranteed to sort of land on him as soon as he enters the screen. Uh, he shoots three bullets at you in timed intervals, so you can jump over them and avoid him. He doesn't get hurt, unlike the ninja or the samurai, by exploding bombs. Instead, you have to throw the bombs directly at his head. It's not the explosion that hurts him, it's the bomb that hurts him, if that makes any sense. Ah, the ninja under a bridge. <laughs> I swear, this enemy had to be a joke. Uh, he's a pink ninja that crawls underneath the bridges, and if you walk over him, he thrusts upward, trying to stab you with a sword. The only problem is, he's too slow. 
So you can just walk right over him and he's not that big of a deal. If you want to feel safer, you can jump over him. The sword isn't that long, so it's not that big of a problem. Once you get across the bridge, he will jump, leap out from underneath the bridge and he'll start jumping up and down like a madman. I don't know why. You just hit him with a bomb and he's dead. Again, this is one of the more simpler enemies to deal with in the game. The knife-throwing bastards. Oh, I hate these guys. They're a pain in the ass. The first time you see them, you're going to die immediately because they throw these barely visible knives on screen that whack you and kill you in one hit. There's only one way to deal with these guys. You've got to be running at full momentum, jump, and throw a bomb in motion. That is, you can't stop, jump up, and hit them. It's kind of a ninjutsu -ish. and It takes a little bit getting used to, but once you master it, you'll be able to kill them without any real problems. Ah, uh, the Bat Trainer. This guy is a big pain in the butt, but you can get used to him relatively quickly. Unlike the knife thrower, this guy has a flying, I guess, bat or a hawk on his arm, and it takes really kind of strange angles towards your character that kill you if you try to duck underneath it. What you need to do with this guy is either kill him before he releases the bat, or when he does release the bat, you have to do some jumping maneuvers to avoid the bat, kill him, and then move on until the bat's off screen. Not that big of a deal, but it can be a pain in the ass in some areas when you only have two pixels of, of a spot to move on and you're trying to avoid a bat and kill the guy at the same time. It can be a little difficult, to say the least. The butt. They're kind of a hybrid between the guy with the helmet and the guy with the gun. Uh, they move in generally the same way that the guy with the gun moves, but they have the same ability as the guy with the helmet in that you can't hit them with bombs or anything because they just cut them in half. They also have this annoying magical power that they can shoot at you that you have to jump over. So they are a little bit more difficult than the average enemy, but not by much. If you have pixel perfect aim, you can shoot them with a bomb at their feet and they'll blow up and die and you'll get points and you'll be happy. Or you can just run away from them like I do because they only give you about 500 points and they're really not worth it. Besides enemies, there are also unkillable obstacles as well as items in this game, and the interaction between the items and the obstacles is really what makes this game unique. For an early NES game, it really makes you think strategically about how you're going to play, rather than just treating this as a simple run-and-jump platformer. Women. They latch onto you and slow you down. Now hey, don't look at me, I'm not being sexist, that's actually what happens in the game, plus they take away your ability to jump. They only latch on for a short amount of time, so it's not that big of a problem, but it still can be quite an annoyance. If you have four gold coins, they'll take them away and run away. Or you can do what I do and just drown them in some water. The ghosts act a lot like the women. They latch onto you and they slow you down, only they don't take away your ability to jump. I think you move a little bit slower with the ghosts, but I can't be certain. If you have an amulet, which looks a lot like a chili dog, they'll just take the amulet and leave you alone. They're not too hard to deal with, but they can be a little bit of annoyance. The log or the dog. These things can be a bit of a pain in the butt. They'll appear on screen and just take a straight path so you can jump over them. But after you see them, you know you've been taking too long to clear the level. If you see two of them in a row, that means the difficulty is going to ramp up significantly. You see a third one, and I guarantee you're not going to be able to survive to the end of the level. The border guard. He wants one of the passports or six gold coins. If you don't have either of them, he's going to beat you up, which slows you down, takes away your ability to jump, and takes away your ability to fire bombs. That is problematic, especially in the later levels when you have enemies coming at you left and right. So make sure you either have six gold coins or you always have a passport. The thief. If you don't have a katana, he steals all your items. He's a lot like the border guard in his movement style, so he's very fast and very difficult to avoid. I highly recommend carrying a very large supply of katanas with you at all times. Well, actually, you only need to carry about four, because he only appears four times in the game. But just make sure you have him just in case. The flying pink ninja. He appears to drop rocks at you, which fall straight down, and he also floats left and right at the top of the screen in various levels later in the game. If you touch him, you die, and if you touch the rocks, you die. He can be a pain when the screen is full of enemies, but he's really not too much of a bother when you're really moving along in the level. Alright, you've probably heard enough about the enemies. Let's talk about how to actually beat this hard son of a bitch. You get one-ups in this game for either getting enough points or for picking up these little one-up dolls. Now, you get 1-ups at 20,000, 60,000, and 100,000 points. But I don't know if you get any more 1-ups after that, because after 100,000 points, I didn't see another 1-up till the end of the game, and that was at 262,000 points. 
You can also get 1-ups by collecting 1-up dolls. The only problem with them is that they don't appear like normal items. You actually have to bomb the same area twice before they'll show up. And in one case, I had to bomb an area three times for the dolls to show up. So unless you're really lucky or you're really crazy and bomb every area of the screen like five times, you're probably not going to run into this one too often. One of the best ways to beat this game is to master the momentum. Now I know you're going to say, what, physics in an NES game? But yeah, there is a certain level of physics in this game. For example, the jumping physics in this game. You cannot change direction while in midair. In fact, you can only barely slow down your momentum in one direction. So once you jump, you're committed to going in that direction. Also, if you jump straight up, that's it. You go straight up. You can't go left or right until you fall back to the ground. If you fall straight down, you're going to fall straight down. So if you don't jump off a ledge, you're just going to plunk right down to the ground. You can't go left or right. It's very realistic, but at the same time, it can be problematic if you're used to games like Super Mario Brothers, where they'll give you momentum on the way down. The bomb mechanics in this game piss me off. You see, the bombs follow an arc, as if Kantaru is actually throwing the bombs, which is great. I love realism in my games. The problem is that sometimes you want to be able to throw the bombs straight, and that doesn't happen. So oftentimes you'll find that your bombs are actually sailing over the heads of your enemies when you meant to hit them smack in the skull. It can be a little problematic to find the right spot so you can actually hit some of the enemies. There are a ton of items in this game, and all they really do is interact with the unkillable objects. There are a few times, however, where they'll come in handy. For example, there are some unjumpable passes where you need to pay two gold coins in order to proceed. If you don't have any coins, you either need to bomb the hell out of the screen you're on to find them, or commit suicide and start over. If you get three chili dogs, shoes will drop from the heavens which allow you to walk on clouds. Sadly, this also lets the enemies walk on clouds as well. If you get ten gold coins, a warp door will appear in an entirely unreasonable location, and it'll warp you anywhere from three to six levels ahead in the game. If you get the rice bowl, you'll roll like a boulder and run over all of your enemies. It's kind of like the star in Super Mario Brothers, where you're invulnerable, but the only difference is you don't actually have much control over Kantaru during this period. So if you're going too slow, you're not really going to go anywhere and just sort of roll in, in position. If you're going too fast in some sections, you'll actually end up rolling into the water and dying. It can be a little tricky to get used to it, but once you've played through it enough, you'll be able to get the hang of it. That's it for this game, really. I mean, without going into detail on all the levels, uh, this game is frustrating, uh, but it's also addictive. And it's fun. My personal high score is 262,200 points. If you can beat that, please post a comment and let me know. So what do you get for beating this game? <laughs> What's the end screen like? Well, 